Hello, welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger. On September second, twenty twenty-one, and we are continuing on our little back trail of fantasy-related books and novels, and action figures and characters that are related to them from my very own collection. And today we have. Uh, one of the uh, really really good offers uh, uh, added, newly added to my collection just this year.、Um, it's a creation. Actually,、uh, the character was created by、uh, one of my most favorite fantasy book authors of all time. But I am skipping a little bit ahead of myself on the camera on the screen. If I got things lined up properly,、uh, I don't know if I did. So if if I didn't, you guys can let me know.、Uh, if I had things lined up properly, you should be looking at two objects. The object、uh, on the right should be a large twenty-sided die for、uh, rolling the die at the、uh, role-playing. Tabletop role-playing game, and on the left should be a nice statue of a kitty cat、uh, sitting in a、uh, sitting pose. Normally, we open Toy Thursday with either the character of the day or an action figure that can lead up to it. We very rarely open the series or open the show with. The accessories that come with the action figure, but the action figure in question today comes with so much interesting accessory、uh, that I thought、uh, using just a couple of them to open up the show will be most fitting. And also, because these are the two smallest items hardest to show on screen,、uh, so I thought I better get them out of the way. But first, let's go back to the late 1960s. An upcoming author writer who would end up being one of the most influential writers in the Dungeons and Dragons world, by the name of Ed Greenwood. Started to put his childhood fantasy into words. Ed Greenwood had always dreamt of this world, this fantasy world that had giants and trolls and dragons and elves and magicians and wizards and、uh, brave warriors and fair maidens. This warrior, once upon a time, was very close to our reality. But as our world moved on, that world drifted further and further away from our reality, and ended up being forgotten by most people. This world would later become one of the most famous campaign in the Dungeon and Dragon role-playing game called the Forgotten Realm. Uh, in the beginning, in its humble beginning, Forgotten Realm was just a series of little short articles and stories Ed Greenwood would submit to the Dragon Magazine, which was the drag、uh, the magazine that the very famous Dungeon and Dragon and Dragon Lands、uh, books came out of. Gradually, eventually, the、uh, people that ran Uh, Dragon magazine and Dragon Games decided that Ed Greenwood's Forgotten Realm was such a great cohesive creation that they wanted to use it in their game, and that's when Ed Greenwood's creation became immensely popular with role-playing fantasy、uh, game players. And then we fast forward. To、uh, 
1987, I believe, 1986, 87, somewhere around that, when another very famous author, one of my personal favorites,、uh, by the name of R. A. Salvatore, wrote a series of stories detailing the adventure of a barbarian warrior. And his brave companion, and try to submit his stories to、uh, Dragon Magazine, and then he was told that in order for his stories to be considered, he had to make some changes, and one of the changes he made was he had to get rid of his main character. He had to get rid of his barbarian warlord, and so he quickly wrote up another. Drastically different character and put it in the barbarian's place. This was the dark elf Drow Ranger, Driss Duerden. Driss Duerden、uh, is going to be our main character for today's video, and there is a lot to talk about. So let's bring him onto the screen. <laughs> Who is Drizzt Warden? Well, as I mentioned, Drizzt Warden was the creation of R. A. Salvatore for his fantasy stories that he added to the Forgotten Realm storyline. Now, Drizzt Warden was born as a drow, not a troll, but a drow. D R O W. What is a drow? Well, <laughs> I I imagine for most of you who are not fantasy geeks like me. You wouldn't know what a drow is. A drow is a dark elf, not like Santa Claus elf, not like North Pole elf, but more like the elf in Lord of the Rings.、Uh, in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, elf has been portrayed as super tall, super athletic, super long living, super graceful, super magical,、uh, just perfect everything. You know, we we. People hate people that are too perfect, so that's why some people really don't like elves.、Uh, but elves is that the the elven race is a race that is got the perfect. They got well, I mean, I wouldn't say that perfect because they a lot of them have really bad attitudes. They're prone to being arrogant and、uh, selfish and snobbish and stuff like that.、Uh, but anyway, so in R. A. Salvatore's stories, there's a Second race of elves.、Uh, there's the regular elves, the tall, beautiful, arrogant, graceful, magical,、uh, perfect people. And then there's the drow. The drows are the evil elves. They're dark elves. They're elves that、uh, live underground and they do evil things like kidnap little children and uh, uh, assassinate heroes and、uh, murder people, etc., etc. With the exception of Twist Dwarden, our subject of the day, Twist was a little bit different. He never liked to cause mayhem. He was different from the other trolls. So when he got a chance, he struck out, left his underground home, and joined a band of adventurers. Became a ranger, and traveled the world. Uh, defeating evil beings and brought justice wherever he went. He is a very noble person. He worships nature, and、uh, all, all in all, he's just a really cool character.、Uh, he often wields two blades in his hand into battle, and he has a lot of speed and grace. He's one of the best blades master in the world.、Um, And he also has accumulated a whole bunch of magical artifacts that we will talk about as we progress through today's video. In addition to his、uh, deadly swordsmanship and his magical artifacts that enhances his ability, Drizzt Warden also has the Drow's natural ability. You see, Drows as、uh, dark elves, evil elves. They have two、uh, abilities of their own. One is they can cloak the their surrounding in impenetrable darkness, blinding their enemy 
and themselves in the process. But you see, this is what make Drift Dwarf and, and the Drolls very unique. Because these elves are so used to living underground, they're so used to living in the dark, they can fight just as well when they're blind uh, than anyone else that they might encounter. So a lot of time during his adventure, when Drift Dwarf and go up against uh, enemies that are too powerful or uh, more skilled or more devastating than he is, he will choose to just cover the surrounding in this darkness. So him and his opponent have to fight each other blind, and which give him the super benefit, this advantage because he's okay fighting blind. He knows how to fight blind. So in a sense, uh, Drift Dwarden is very close to my heart as uh, even though he is not actually blind, he will choose to take the fight there. He will choose to fight blind just to give himself that little bit of advantage. The Drolls also have a secondary magic ability that they can use, which is called Fairy Fire. Now, Fairy Fire is that if they run to an invisible enemy, an enemy that cannot be detected or seen, uh, some supernatural enemy, for example, uh, they can cause the enemy to be surrounded by this pink uh, aura, so the enemy can still be located easily. So you see, these uh, dark elves, these evil elves, they specialize in messing with people's uh, visual senses. Going to battle, Drift Dwarden is known to wield a pair of long curving blades uh, one is called Twinkle, and one is called Icing Death. Icing Death, just like how its name sound, can generate uh, ice elemental attack, uh, producing blasts and shards of ice uh, that cuts into the enemy. And Twinkle is uh, basically magically sharp, uh, sharp enough to cut through almost any materials. And as you can see, the action figure definitely came with both Icing Death and Twinkle. The action figure also came with a pair of icy looking uh, energy effect pieces that you can slide over their swords, uh, his swords, to make them look like they're producing magical effects. And this is uh, one of the very, very few uh, whoops moments uh, that uh, Hasbro, who produced this really, really cool action figure of Twist Warden, uh, have made. This is kind of a whoopsie moment because, technically speaking, only Icing Death uh, can produce this kind of icy energy effect. Uh, Twinkle, on the other hand, shouldn't have that. But, but uh, I mean, you know, so that we would get two magical swords rather than one. We're not really going to complain too much about that. Uh, while we are at it, I might as well mention the other folly, the other whoopsie uh, of Hasbro in this case. You see, in the story, uh, Drift Dwarden is not a very big guy. He's an a underground dark elf. So he's very slim. He's like 130 pounds, maybe 5 foot 4. Uh, but this action figure clears the 6 inches mark making him uh, basically the same size as most other 6 inch action figures. So he should be smaller, he should be shorter, uh, but he's such a cool character. We're going to uh, let that one slide as well. At least we're not going to whine too much about it. Of course, by now, a lot of us who collect action figures in the last 10 years know that Hasbro is quickly becoming um, if not the best action figure makers, they have become really, really top of the line for making 6-inch action figures. So, no surprising that Drift Warden can get into almost any pose that you want a super achieving Blade Master Dark Elf can get into. He had double jointed elbows, knees, and ball jointed neck, and uh, butterfly shoulders, and uh, ball jointed torso, hips. Uh, let's just put it this way, and almost anything you want that need to move, will move. The only thing that I'm hearing that don't move, and I, I honestly don't mind, uh, is uh, uh, his toes and his fingers. Because 
I find uh, toe joints usually make action figures fall over very easily, and finger joints just makes them unable to hold onto their weapon. So I'm I don't miss those at all. Chris Jordan is depicted here, clad in a、uh, kind of muted-looking blue and brown armor, accented with gold, and he has、uh, a sh shocking white long hair and lavender-colored eyes. Though most of his body is covered with、uh, plated armor,、uh, really cool-looking.、Uh, his face, you can tell that he has a kind of really pale skin tone, like.、Uh, Dark elves tend to have because they live underground, so they are not really exposed to a lot of sunlight. In addition to his plate armor and his、uh, two swords, Icy Death and Twinkle,、uh, he also have. I don't know if you guys can see it. I hope you can.、Uh, a unicorn necklace around his neck, and that unicorn necklace is a symbol of his、uh, faith. It's a symbol of the. Goddess of nature, which、uh, Dwight Stewart, being a ranger, that、uh, who he worships. In addition to that, Dwight Stewart also wears a pair of bracers around his ankles. These are called the bracers of blinding strike. Normally, people wear them on their hands, but Dwight Stewart. Decided to wear them on his ankles because Dwight Warden was already so freaking fast, even without the bracer. When he put the bracer on his arms, he ended up moving too fast. He every time he swing his sword, his arms move way ahead of his body, and he couldn't control his movement. So he decided rather than putting the bracer on his arm, he put on his ankles. So this allow him to run super super fast, so give him super swift and、uh, evasive footwork in combat. So that paired with his already amazing swordsmanship,、uh, makes him a deadly opponent in combat. Chris Jordan also comes with two face options for you to pick from. One, the face is calm and collected. The other one is more battle-ready and、uh, filled with、uh, rage, or、uh, maybe he is just、uh, really, really determined.、Um, now, in the story, Dwight Warden can put himself into this、uh, almost like a berserker mode. He called the hunter mode. While he goes into hunter mode, he is a lot more ruthless and cruel. And all his physical attributes go to the top, so he becomes stronger, faster, and all that stuff.、Uh, and he loses a little bit of his humanity.、Uh, he's more like a villain in when he's in hunter mode. So maybe there's、uh, two faces. One is supposed to be him as a good guy, and the other is him as a psychotic killer.、Uh, he also has two different hair options. One of the hair options is his long hair hanging straight down, like he is standing still. And the other one we have already seen earlier is his hair blowing out to the side, like he is、uh, in action,、uh, in a sword fight or something like that. But that is not all. In addition to the extra facial expression, extra hair. The two swords, the magical effect for the sword, Dwight Warden also comes with、uh, two different pairs of hands: a pair of hands to hold the sword with, and another pair of hands that、uh, when you don't want him to hold the sword. And to top it off, he also comes with this majestic-looking fur-trimmed cloak that he does wear a lot in his storyline because he is a ranger. He has to be out there. Braving the element, scouting for his allies, so he has to be able to stay warm. So he has this、uh, royal-looking,、uh, very noble-looking fur-trimmed cloak that he can wear, and that comes with the action figure. So you can decide to uh, uh, have it on him or not.
So a quick recap. Oh, by the way, when you have the cloak on him, it will restrict his arm movement somewhat, but it is not bad. I mean, considering how majestic、uh, the cloak makes him look, it would be really a shame to leave it off of him.、Uh, it does affect his articulation, his joints. It will、uh, make him a little bit harder to balance. But if you、uh, just be patient with him, it it is a really worthwhile look. Uh, so a quick recap. So far, we have Dwiss Dwarden, the Droll Ranger, the one dark elf who became a hero, one of the deadliest blade masters in the world,、uh, equipped with a unicorn medallion,、uh, symbol of his goddess, a pair of bracers of blinding strike. He has the ability to blind his opponent at will, and he is just as good fighting blind. Uh, than when he can see. On top of all that,、uh, the action figure itself, made by Hasbro, comes with two face options, two hair options, two pairs of hands, two swords, two、uh, scabbards for the sword that hang from his hips.、Uh, in the beginning of the video, we have him just carrying the sword on his hip, and there's also two magical effects. That can slip over his sword to make them look battle ready. If this is all, that already made Dress the Warden one of the best fantasy action figures made、uh, in the last、uh, five, ten years. But there is more. Of course, we already know he comes with this really nifty twenty-sided die、uh, that I showed in the beginning of the video. That if you are a gamer. This is really cool. Huh? It's got nice sound here when you roll it.、Uh, I don't play a tabletop game, so I kind of wish that I could turn this into a keychain, but I don't want to damage it by drilling a hole in it. So anyway, it just sit in my drawer.、Um, he also came with that little kitty cat statue. What is that about? You see in the story.、Uh, Dwiss Dwarden has a statue, little mini cat statue. The statue is called the Statue of Wondrous Power. When he invokes the statue, he summons a spirit animal that can fight alongside him, and his spirit animal is a giant black panther called Guinevere. So we have Guinevere as a little statue form, but he also Came with the full size Guinevere of the Panther herself. Long, long time ago, Guinevere was a living Panther who was fated to be turned into a magical artifact by a wizard. But the wizard's good friend, another ranger.、Uh, Saw the nobility in this great animal, and asked the wizard not to kill Guinevere. In repaying the debt, Guinevere later、uh, was part of the team that rescued the ranger from being killed by a group of giants. And unfortunately, during the battle, the panther was mortally wounded. So the wizard and the ranger decided to try to save her、uh, spirit as best as they could. So they bound her spirit to a little kitty cat statue. So whoever owns the statue can summon Guinevere back into the world to fight alongside them, and Guinevere can stay in the mortal world for twelve hours at a time. While in our world, she appears as a giant black panther. And has all the strength and speed and attribute she had while she was alive, but also because she is a spirit animal, she is very difficult to harm. So she is、uh, very deadly in battle. Guinevere here has black fur with purple highlights, yellow eyes, and her the inside of her mouth painted pink. She has a very long tail, 
And unlike most other animal companions that would come with action figures, you see most of the time when you get an animal companion that comes with action figures, the animals they are not jointed; they're just a solid lump of plastic. Gunnivir here is just as articulated as a regular action figure. All her、uh, limbs work from the shoulder to elbow to ankles. Her mouth opens and closes. Her body is、uh, jointed, so she can turn at the Waist and her、uh, head, neck, or、uh, tail—they're all articulated. She is the most articulated big cat action figure I have seen to date. Here is Genevieve, rearing up on her back leg, ready to pounce, standing beside her、uh, companion and best friend, Dristen at、uh, Dristwarden, the ranger. The troll, the blade master, and you can really appreciate how big this panther is. When she wears up, he is she is taller than Dwight Warden. Ah,、uh, so even when she's down on all fours, she is ah、uh, really really big as far as panthers go. Let me mention ah、uh, Genevieve and Dwight Warden and the stories of their. Many many adventures were、uh, written by my favorite fantasy author R. A. Salvatore. If you have not read any R. A. Salvatore books,、uh, and if you are into fantasy, if you are into swords and dragons and adventures and heroics like that, then R. A. Salvatore is just so awesome. I think what I like about R. A. Salvatore the most is he incorporates. A lot of Asian influences in his writing. So、uh, a lot of the warriors, a lot of the martial arts, a lot of the、uh, cultures and traditions he writes in his fantasy novels、uh, come straight from Chinese or Oriental cultures, which、uh, makes them very close to what I'm used to reading.、Uh, if you don't know where to start, then I recommend starting from the Demon War Saga. It's really, really well written.、Uh, it's a little bit scary, a little bit sad and depressing, but it's really well written. Definitely worth a read.、Uh, if you have not read it,、uh, worth checking out. So anyway,、uh, this is it.、Uh, Chris Dwarden and Guinevere, a two-pack offer from Hasbro in their Forgotten Realm Dungeon and Dragon line, and like I said.、Uh, One of the best action figure、uh, from the fantasy genre in the last five or ten years.、Uh, if you can, definitely worthwhile picking them up. Thank you for checking out today's Toy Thursday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Fitness Friday. For now, have a good night.